Hi everyone, welcome back, and welcome to a new chapter in the Curtis Holt channel. What does that mean? I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But of course today I have yet another collection of exciting Blender projects which have appeared in the community, as well as new tutorials as well. There's just so much stuff to show, but you know I love checking it out and sharing it with you. So, the first thing on the list. The lovely Polyfjord, who we've been recommending quite a bit recently, is starting a new tutorial series on photorealism and cinematography, and the first episode of this is available now, called Lighting in Blender. Now the whole point of this video is showing how to get a really beautiful lighting setup using just one light, which is interesting because when you hear about professional lighting setups, you always think about tri-point lighting, which is where you have like three lights, like a key light, a rim light, and a fill light and stuff like that. But in this video, Polyfield shows us how sometimes less is more. And I actually learned something really important in this video because I've always known that I like area lights when compared to point lights in regards to lighting the subjects in my scene. But I never really understood why, but this video made it really clear and I'll give you a spoiler, it's to do with the shadowing. So if you want to learn about that for yourself, then head over to the video. Of course, I'll leave links to everything below. And it's also kind of inspiring me to go back to some of my other resources and kind of update the lighting setups. I'll probably end up doing like a new lighting package for the asset browser, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so the next thing on the list is a 15 year old community member who goes by the username of Nugget has updated their fantastic procedural rain shader. I think it's probably the most realistic rain droplet shader I've ever seen, but of course it's the fantastic thing, it's available on Gumroad. So if you check it out, it's only $2 for personal use and $15 for commercial. And there are some nice demonstrations here as well. So if you play the video here, you can see it running down. I'm actually going to show you the blend file for this as well because I picked it up. There are two main components to this, there's the actual raindrops falling and then the ripple effect, and it's got all sorts of parameters. So let's head over to Blender and I'll give you a quick demonstration of it. Okay, so if you pick up the shader, the file might look like this when you get it. If you go into the rendered view, it may be pink to start with, and that's because the HDRI may not be packed into the world nodes, but that's fine. You don't need it for the actual node group. So if you just unplug that there in the world nodes, I'm going to actually brighten up the world background just so we can see this better. So if we play the timeline, and by the way, this works in both Eevee and Cycles, I should say, then you can see everything playing back there and I can scrub the timeline manually if you want to check that out on the frame by frame change. But if you go into the object nodes, if I have this template object here selected, we can see how the rain drips node group is being used to compose this material. So you can plug in like any color or texture or whatever you like to whatever shader you like and then just use this value as a mask to enhance that material. So for example, if I take the height here and plug that into the color, then you'll be able to just see the mask as it is. And then we can play that back as well. And I think this is really handy because all the parameters are there, it's procedural, and just combine it with any procedural or non-procedural material you like. There's also vector inputs here as well if you want to kind of change your selection for those. You know, UV generated object, etc. For example, we can take the object coordinate here and plug that in. When the shader recalculates, we'll see that it's fine. We can change the scale and everything and just keep playing it down. So yeah, you can give it like any vector coordinate you like just to make it appropriate for whatever object you're applying it to. And you can see here the example of how the height's being passed into a bump node, which is giving us the clear coat normal for the effect. So we can change the strength of that as well. And then if you look around the edges of the object here, you'll be able to see how it looks like the water drop it's actually have some depth to them. Okay, so I think that's really cool. Remember, only $2 for personal use. And Nugget's only 15 years old. Like, we're all just constantly impressed by the talent of young members of this community. The next thing I want to show you is, again, like in a previous video, we mentioned that Lightning Boy Studio was starting an Arcane-inspired tutorial series showing you how to recreate the visual style of the Arcane series on Netflix, which I highly recommend you watch. But video two is now available, and this one is amazing. It's packed with details that I had no idea you could actually use Blender for. Now of course I knew about camera projection, that's going to be one of the key points in this video. Like being able to paint over an image and then project that over the object's UVs. But there's a few tricks in this video that never crossed my mind, and there's one feature in particular that I did not know existed in Blender. And it's shown in this chapter how to bake textures in Eevee. Did you know that when you're in the texture paint mode, maybe I shouldn't spoil this because I actually want you to watch the video, but in the texture paint mode, in the tools tab under options and the external, if you set up an external 2D editor in the edit preferences and then file paths, you can actually press quick edit here and it's going to automatically generate like a baked version of the camera projection and open it in that 2D editor so you can paint it and then you can come back to Blender, click apply and it will automatically apply it to the object. Now again, I don't want to spoil too much of this, but it's a really cool technique. So if you see here, he's got the cube, he's about to press quick edit, he clicks on it, auto generates into Photoshop because that's his external editor. Then he just paints over the top of it, however he likes using his regular 2D workflow, puts it into a new layer so it's the only thing that's going to be affecting the object. So when he clicks apply, it automatically adds it to the object in 3D. And I'm like, what? He didn't have to do like weird saving and importing and doing all this other stuff. Maybe I'm stupid for not knowing that was a thing, but I think I need to do more research into the 2D to 3D workflow in Blender. But if you're interested in learning how that actually works and some extra interesting shading techniques, 
leagues, then you need to give this video a watch. But this has also revitalized my desire for an updated texture painting system in Blender. I know something like that is coming, but God, imagine if we had like really complex brush sets and behaviors and stuff, and just at the point where we didn't actually need to go back and forth between like 2D and 3D things if we were doing really painterly styles. But I think a lot of people want that, so I'm probably preaching to the choir. The next thing I want to show you is an impressive project I saw on Twitter, and I'm going to get the name wrong because I get names wrong all the time, but it comes from Ander, or Ender, Lara, A Ender, Lara, I'm, I'm very sorry. It's not going to be the last name I get wrong in this video, trust me, but I was so impressed with this. It's a demonstration of using bones and constraints for hard surface rigging, but the result is beautiful. Like, check how these joints move in these, like, kind of hydraulic sections, just, like, perfectly adapt. With all the IK as well, I just think, like, of all the demonstrations I've seen, this has to be my favorite. I think. I know that Ian Hubert's also done some quite impressive hard surface joint rigging, but I just really like this one. Also, it's just such a nice model with like the nice distribution of like large, medium and small shapes. So it's just very satisfying to look at. Also, the rig looks pretty clean. And if we check out the creator, we can see that they're an environment artist or animal working on a game called Roman, an insane soup slinging food fighter arena. Very interesting. I like the style of it, very painterly and stylized. Anyway, let's move on. So you know in our last video, I was basically updating a bunch of my old material asset packs for use with the new asset browser, and we also released the new community material pack, which is a collection of free CC0 materials for anyone to use for whatever they like. Or well, someone tagged me in this Instagram post here by Stupid Giant. That's their actual name, I'm not just calling them stupid. But it's called The Watches. And someone asked, how did you do the eyes glitch effect? And they said, this is a plane with the Curtis James Holt glass dispersion material. So this is one of the materials in the new community pack. And I never actually thought about using it for this, but you can see how the light's being dispersed there. That effect in particular is actually contributed by Slink, who's also contributed some work for the Biogen add-on. So if you want to get a glitchy looking, almost chromatic effect for your artwork, then maybe give that shader a try. Again, it's free, it's CC0, it's there to download. So thanks for sharing that stupid giant. I feel so silly saying that name. But if we check them out, they're another user that's actually been trying to do everyday artworks. And the results are actually pretty nice. I mean, I like the artwork, it's pretty good quality. Oh, there's even one for Our Place on there. Speaking about Our Place, if you don't know, it's like um, Reddit did this thing a little while ago where every five minutes every Reddit user could place a pixel on a massive canvas. So different communities were coming together to get their own space on the canvas, and Blender did have its space. It was somewhere up here in the corner up there, and I was part of the defense team, if you want to call it that. I quite like their work, I'll probably follow them. There we go. Suggested, Beeple. I mean, I do like Beeple's work, but I'll leave it for now. I don't want to keep bloating up my following list. Okay, so another project I want to share is this lovely invisibility effect by Gabe. Now, we know there are a collection of node gods in the community. Eren would be one of them, Hans choose another one, Nugget's pretty good, but Gabe is definitely up in that pantheon of node gods. But I think this is such a satisfying effect here. Just how the light's kind of dispersed and the softness of the cloak there, it will give Harry Potter a run for its money. There's some information about how it was done in the tweet replies, but someone's asked any chance of a tutorial on this, and they said they might do a quick tutorial but they don't have many opportunities to do that so they'll need to find the time. They said that it's mostly done with the light path node but I just thought this was a really cool one to share again. Maybe it'll give you some inspiration to try your own invisibility effects. One of the reasons I love taking a look at projects like this is because it kind of reminds you just how versatile the shader node system is in Blender. Okay, so for this next one, CG Bird Julia is back with a new tutorial. This one's about environment sculpting in Blender, and in this one they recreate the Motherland statue in Ukraine, showing you how to go through the blockout process, preparing the model for sculpting, actually doing the sculpting and adding extra details, then going through the texturing process and the lighting, and finally making a camera animation to show off the statue. Now the reason I want to share this video is because I'm happy Julia is still making content. If it's not abundantly obvious in this next bit, Julia is from Ukraine and is still living in Ukraine during everything that's going on. Julia is someone that I've recommended in a previous video on this channel. I was quite happy to see more female creators in the Blender YouTube space, and I know there's more I need to share. But one thing that struck me about Julia originally was just the enthusiasm for making content and the enthusiasm for wanting to teach people how to improve their artwork. Her last video before this one was announcing to people what was going on in Ukraine, and we can have a quick look at that. So here we go, one month ago, stop war in Ukraine, Slava Ukraini. And for a while, some of us creators were obviously getting worried because she wasn't putting out any new videos, but she was still posting on Instagram. So that was reassuring. So I sent her some messages a little while ago, kind of checking in on her to see how she was doing. And she let me know that she was doing all right. And one thing that struck me is she's maintaining a very strong and inspiring outlook for what's going on. She also told me that she made this new video as if it's the last video she makes. And you can feel that because it's a very inspirational message at the beginning. I don't want to speak on her behalf. You should go and you know, watch the video, give it a listen. And I would like you to go and show her some support because she's a member of our Blender YouTube family and I want her to be okay. So if you go over there, 
maybe leave her a nice message, consider supporting her, say hi from our corner of the community. So yeah, on behalf of Julia, I will also leave a link below if you want to donate to Ukraine, or if you want to send out to her Patreon or anything like that. So yeah, thanks for making another video, Julia. I hope you're keeping safe, and I look forward to seeing whatever else you make in the future. Okay, so coming back into the field of Blender and Geometry Nodes, I want to share with you this project by Hans Chu. So this is someone that I did actually mention earlier when talking about the pantheon of Blender node gods. Hans has done this project of bubbles moving through pipes. I think it's very cool. We could use this for like all kinds of weird sci-fi medical mutational stuff. Uh, but he's also shown the node tree down in the Twitter reply. So if you want to take a look at this, maybe right click on it, open as a new image, zoom in and give it a good look. If you've got like a magnifying glass, have a look through it. It should give you an idea of how the system works. Um, Hans Chu is a nanophotonics lab student. He loves doing a lot of stuff relating to optics. I've shared a fair amount of his work on the channel before. He's done some amazing entries for the November challenge. And if you don't know what November is, first of all, where have you been? But really, November is a challenge which happens in November, appropriately, which is where a prompt is given every day or every other day, depending on how they do it, where participants need to create the prompt using just nodes. Now, because the shader node system in Blender is so versatile, there have been some fantastic results. And you can see some of them here from Hans Chu in this compilation video in his pinned tweet. So there are people making like full on animations using the shader node system. I don't understand it. My brain is not big enough for that. Okay, so next up, the Serpens add-on, which is for visual scripting in Blender. So basically, if you want to make your own add-ons for Blender, but you don't want to use Python or you find Python too difficult to learn, even after watching my lovely Python crash course for Blender, then Serpens is the add-on for you. And it's absolutely mind-blowingly fantastic. And I've done a video on it previously. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with it. Even things like using these picker tools to select exactly in the Blender interface where you want to add stuff, which is just a brilliant idea, then it's definitely worth checking out. And it's so worth the price. It's $15 base. It says $11.25 because the spring sale is going at the moment. But by the time this video goes out, I don't know if that will still be active. So just keep that in mind. And get this, it's also compatible with my EasyBPY project. And EasyBPY is basically a module to help simplify how to interact with the Blender Python API by basically providing a collection of useful plain English functions. It's more for people that just want to quickly bash a script out for doing like quick workflow improvements. But anyway, I just thought I'd let you know that there's a new version for it, which adds an auto compiling feature new nodes, new property types, etc. basically extending the feature set. And they also have a fantastic new wiki, which I'll show you. So the wiki is hosted on Notion, which is a fantastic wiki-like project management software, but you can use it for anything you like. So in here we can find things like if we click on the nodes, there'll be a list of all of the different types of nodes. And if we click on any one of them, like, I don't know, copy panel, then there'll be a description with image demonstrations. But some of the nodes have even more comprehensive examples. So for example, if I click on the objects blend data, then there'll be a lot of information here on how to use use it. And it's all nicely presented as well. So I think this is a more accessible and fun way for people to start making Blender add-ons for those that really just can't get their head around the whole coding process. Or maybe even for those that don't have time to invest into learning that. And if I remember rightly from my previous video, Serpens also has an integrated tutorial system inside of the add-on, which I remember being extremely impressed by. Wait, hold on, wait, have they, have they linked one of my discussion videos in the I didn't even notice this. Hold on. As a final note, it may be useful for you to watch the following video. It gives you a good overview of the way you'll need to think when getting into the program part of Serpens. We can create interfaces and display existing options without any knowledge of code and by just adding nodes. When you start getting into making your own operations, you won't get around following a specific thought process. While with Serpens, you still won't have to follow syntax rules and have nodes as abstractions. This remains the same and is explained here quite well. Wow, what a fantastic unexpected plug for my own second channel. Thanks Joshua, the person behind the Serpens add-on who I'm assuming has also written the wiki. Anyway, yeah, feel free to check out Serpens. I believe I have an affiliate link, so I'll leave that down below. If you want to also help support lovely old me, I just called myself old. Oh no, I'm 26. Am I old? Is that old? Existential pre-30s crisis. Anyway, there's one more channel I want to check out in this video, and I told you, I said to you, that the name I tried to pronounce earlier would not be the last name I get wrong, because watch me try and pronounce this. Nenguo. Nengu. Neng Nengo. I hope one of those was even slightly correct. But anyway, this channel has done some incredible Geometry Notes content recently. So one that I really wanted to show off was this one where he recreates physical brush strokes using Geometry Notes. This is absolutely fantastic for doing like physical painting effects. So just to show you the demo here, you can use the curve drawing tool in edit mode and it will draw out physical paint strokes using Geometry Notes over the surface of an object. How cool is that? So how do you manage to achieve that textured mesh effect? Well, you just have to watch the video. 
So I'm going to link it down below. The, it's a multi-part video though, so there's a part one and a part two, so it's quite comprehensive. But then there are also some other interesting videos on the channel, so I like these ones where it's kind of growing out these organic shapes. So I felt like this would be fantastic for like science fiction type artwork, for like, you know, alien planets and stuff. This is right up my alley. So there's a lot of content here to study and work with. So I want to spend more time on this channel, but I thought that because I felt inspired by it, I should definitely share it with you. So yeah, that will close up this video. Hopefully that gives you some interesting stuff to check out. If you found any other content worth sharing in the community, then feel free to leave it in the comments below. But also if you're a dedicated viewer, you know what's coming next. On my channel, we do a thing where at the end of every video, I give you an emoji to put in the comments so I know who made it this far. So the emoji for this video is gonna be randomly generated. Let me just get it. It's gonna be a birthday cake. It's not my birthday, but if it is your birthday, then let me know because that'll be fantastic. I'm also gonna try a different ending pitch for the video, okay? So bear with me, I haven't practiced this yet. If you want to improve your artwork and see what other tools and resources I've made for you, then feel free to check out my other videos as well as my website store page and my store pages on Gumroad and Blender Market. And if you want to help me contribute to the Blender and wider CG community, then feel free to sign up to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Curtis Holt. And in doing so, you can also get your name put permanently on my new artwork project I'm starting called the Hall of Patrons. So from now on, anyone that signs up to my Patreon at any tier will get their name put permanently on this piece of artwork. And it's going to be an evolving project, so the framing might change, it might be a few different frames, but I just thought it'd be a cool idea to have like a permanent record of everyone that contributed. So if you're interested in that, then sign up. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day, everyone, and I will see you next time.